Welcome to the Northern Touch Show. I'm your host, Tom, a.k.a. Director Awesome, joined by Thrust OG and DJ Despair. And today we are joined by special guest Kwame Damon Mason, who is an actor and a writer of a documentary, uh, Soul on Ice. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. I don't know about the actor thing, man. I tried that for a minute, you know. And, uh... <laughs> Hey, hey, you still got a credit wish, to acting, right? You still got I know. the credit. I wish I wish I wish I held on, man. I wish I held on because I look at cats like Anthony Mackie and, and Naz and like that. I'm like, yo, that's my generation. Yeah. When I was when I was trying to, if I had a you know stuck to it, I remember I, I used to go to this actor school, Sears and Switzer, mm -hmm. um, who Maestro and Michi ended up going to after. And I remember the teacher, Teresa, she was just like, you know, you're really good, but you can't do it from, from here. You got to mm -hmm. go. And I never had the guts. I didn't have the guts. I'll tell you, I'm honest. You know, it's, it's funny you said you, to go to even like me too. LA I could have done that. People have said about me too in my speech and my voice. You could have, you got that dramatic. But you know, the funny thing about me is I never wanted to like be that dude, like with the lines, man. I'm not that dude with the lines. I was like, scared. I'm scared. I was scared. I know. Reversing I was... the lines, the lines, the lines. I got to sit, uh, do it, and then be doing an MC and doing all this other stuff. I said, I don't know if I, it's me, man. It's the same thing. Like MC, yeah. and you know, you got, you got to remember your lyrics, right? But it's different when it's in a rhythm. It's right. Really, like rhyming's oh, different, man. That's the same. And it rhythm. depends on your creative oh. process too. My creative process is different. So, but for everybody, it's different, man. Depends on like people who are really writing off the pen. I think they could. They're like me. I'm more off. I'm like on a J Biggie kind of like. It comes right in the studio and then I fill it in. I don't really even write that much, really. And then yeah. if I do write, it's very quick and it's very like I do it in a moment and I record it. So for me, there's no moment to really, I don't really memorize. When you hear thoughts and lyrics, it's not memorized. It's very on the spot, my whole mm -hmm. my whole catalog, just so you know. That's why I did the Chosen Ones. Even Grand, I wrote Grand in, two, in three minutes, man. I wrote it, mm -hmm. but three minutes. Word. That whole album was called The Chosen but we did the, So that just, it depends on your process. It's like how people write. Other people, they like, right or they punch in a lot and everyone has a different thing in the craft man mm. but same with this right with uh with podcasting like anything that's scripted i can't do it i sound scripted i i you know i even if i want to memorize it i'll sound scripted but i can do this all day long i can sit here and i can talk i can have a conversation i can go on video and do this all day long so it's that's a lot different when yeah yes yeah, when exactly. i do my show when i do like the soul nice podcast I write, you know, besides, yeah, I write all my stuff, but I, I mean, I think that's maybe because of my radio background, I'm able to like, I can write something and, and I can, I can spit it to you and you think I'm just spitting it to you, but I'm literally right reading what I'm writing. And I try to show like my boys, Akil Thomas and Elijah, who are my co-hosts, I try to sh try to show them that technique because right there, you know exactly what you're going to say and and how to say it it's just you know it's and it's just i think it goes back to the whole acting training too it's like delivering lines and yeah know. no it's definitely important and it's a place just definitely a place especially when you're doing um you know like when i see like uh tim and friends tim and sid all that but you got to have your bullets your points something to keep you keep you streamlined right especially when oh, you're like with time thing. and commercials and and things are coming in like you got to get the points through you know what i mean get your points across so right? that's the thing like i'll write point form like i'll, I'll <laughs> jot down a couple of notes what i want to touch on but like i'll elaborate on it just from the top of my head and i'll keep going with it from there yeah yeah all right good yeah, yeah. man I, we all i think we all agree just like yeah just the, the way you kind of attack it in a sense mm -hmm. yeah we well, gotta so, be professional you know yeah. what i'm saying I just so speaking it. professional what's yeah, going yeah, yeah i know the spirit professional look you gotta look at all, all the professional man there. i just get up oh, i vision it and i do it it's just Dude, you, you're know. the digital king, man. I tell you, this guy sees all the promos, the 3D, everything jumping off the page, the cooking show. The Quam, Mason, you know how much shows this dude has, man? How many shows you got? How many TV shows or shows you got together? This well, if you can remember. Weekly with <laughs> this, I have five shows in process. Um, two not airing right now, and 
the rest is airing. Like right. on internet or broadcast? Yes. Oh, yep. for real. I have uh, one on Friday nights. I have another one before that. Then I have two radio podcasts. Oh. And that I'm well, not like, they're kind of like a mini podcast type thing where I, I'm critiquing records on Fridays. Uh, tomorrow night, um, in, uh, well, it will be Thursday here. Like, well, whatever. We'll put that in there. <laughs> We're going to be interviewing at the Ebola. time of recording <laughs> at the time <laughs> yeah. in the, in the month of April, um, in the final weeks, I'm interviewing, uh, eight ball and MJG tomorrow. And we're going you know, back and do, critiquing I'm to, their music. I'm about to do, about to do Keenan Thompson. Oh man. That is That's sick. crazy. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna double to your whole, tear up your whole podcast. Yeah. I got, I, I I know you're there. It's like I get into them. I have to really focus on them when I go. So I have my three or four I go into, and then I go in the song, and I just delve right in, man. So, you know, you've been on the checklist. But we for the show, we had you. We had you. That's time. I had you bookmark way back. I said one of the first people, even Despair, though. I said, yo, Kwame coming on, man. And, and I said, right. Kwame going to respond. I go, everybody else. I said, everybody else going to be a little thing. I go, watch when I link up my homie. It's gonna be bam. You see, Kwan? Yeah. See how we did it? I don't, you know. We, we from the true school. That's why we know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's so, get this popping. Yeah, let, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's get into the Soul on Ice. Let's get okay. to Soul on Ice and uh, the documentary. Um, mm. I guess how how did you how did that come about? Uh, getting to start that up, and mm. when you're doing that, uh, how how are you getting into <sighs> actually getting funding for that? Is this like a federal thing? Is it a provincial thing? How does that all come about? Um. So I I, I, uh, I got I got into doing this because like I was living in Edmonton when I was working I was working at a radio station out there, and I'd be around a lot of those Edmonton Oilers, and I just really liked their vibe, man. They were a lot different than being around um, like you know the NBA guys. The NBA guys when you go to a club, you know they're in the VIP spot. It's like you can't even talk to them or something like that. But these NHL players are just like, yo, you want a beer? You want a drink? Let's hang out. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And so I like I love their vibe, and then seeing George LaRock so popular in Edmonton, I was like, you know, I I thought to myself, I was like, man, like he's like, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I know that's his boys and stuff like that, but like, man, I wonder what that's like to always be around like nobody that looks like you, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so just going into like online and looking at history i just you know i learned about the colored hockey league of the maritimes and that kind of tripped me out because you know I, you know i was in my in my late 30s at that it's time it's funny you said that because he he is the it. person i always always looked at him too and being a brother you don't know, say we you know saying tyler from toronto loving hockey you always wondered man like just to be that role and be that alone you know what i mean yeah i, I can kind of relate to when i did soul decision i toured the states and i was with I was with I was with the pop, but it was still Canadian, like West Coast music yeah. dudes, and I was surrounded by like Destiny's Child and brothers every day. So I still was around my my culture, like my culture outnumbered everything that the perception was on the outside. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for him, just being alone, like it's crazy, right? Yeah. You must have, like, are you still? You must still. Did you guys form a friendship too from that? Yeah, we, we did. We did. Um, we we had a radio. I had a radio show, and he was on it, so I knew him throughout. So I consider him a friend to this day, you know what I mean? And um good you have an open channel, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just kind of that kind of was the thing that made me want to make the film, just seeing these guys and just wondering about their history. And I knew that there was a long-standing history um of black athletes that a lot of people just did not know. And I knew that the game was changing. I I saw I saw where we are at today in hockey. I saw that back in like 20, you know, um, 20, like 206, 207. I've been saw that. And I knew that the game was here. I knew that something was going to happen because there's too many young guys that were coming up that were on fire. Wayne Simmons, PK Subban, yep. Um, yep. You know, Jerome McGillan. I, all these guys were just, I'm just like, okay, there's a shift happening. And with them, it's going to, there's going to be more young guys going. And I know yep. once they, once you start to see more of them and the way social media and how our entertainment was going, I was like, it's going to come up and somebody's going to bring up the issues that happened or who was the first. And I knew that was going to happen. So I was like, yo, no one ain't doing it. Let me go and do it. And then to go back to your other question, Tom, about funding, man, uh, what's, what's homeboy's name who made that movie? Um, 
Hollywood Shuffle. What's the boy's name? Black comedian. Oh, oh Hollywood Shuffle. Oh my God. He um, did, he did. Oh he man. Did, he did. Oh movie. man. Oh my God. I can see the face too, man. I'm not even playing when I say that. It's okay. We'll come back to us. The threat to Hollywood Shuffle. Go ahead. So homeboy him. made Hollywood Shuffle on the strength of his own money. Like he. He spent a lot of his own money to make that movie. I can't believe he's an OG. Somebody, somebody, please look that up. But um, he's an OG, and I remember he had a story about having to to spend his own money to make his film because he wasn't getting funding from nobody. And mm -hmm. then one of my favorite directors is Robert Rod Robert Rodriguez. He did like mm -hmm. you know I know him from like um, Desperado and El Mariachi and all that, and he with his first film, which was El Mariachi, did the same, like self-funded. And I was, you know, I didn't have no directorial um, credits. So nobody was giving me no money for, for to make any of this. So I had a condo. Despair, you got it? Robert Townsend. Yeah. Robert, Robert yeah, Townsend. Robert That's why I can see his face, man. Yeah, Robert Townsend. Yeah. So Robert I was Townsend, inspired yeah. by him and Robert Rodriguez in the sense, like, once I realized that we weren't getting no grants or no funding for it. I was like, yo, man, I got this condo in in, in in Edmonton. Let me just sell that. I'll go back to Toronto, catch up under my, my pops who had the house. It was just him alone. My mom had just passed. So I was like, yo, But that's why you came back, man. Yeah. You know, I always wonder, you know, you say when you came back, I saw you came spot. back. Remember I, I said that money? Yeah. We used to connect because I was always in Calgary. So I was, yeah. we always had to connect with him out there. Yeah. But I was like, why did he come back? I know you were good out there. When I see him on Cal, I was like, yo, Cal's is good. Yeah. But I said, I said, he's back for a reason. I said, you can see in your eyes, like you're back for a purpose. I said, yeah. well, he's on a path for something. We'll see. And that's so, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah he made that move. That, 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 that's, you know what I mean? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get grants or any funding until the final hour when we were in, when we were down to where we were about to start editing. We had applied for this grant from from TELUS and they gave us some money and that helped us finish the film. But for the first two and a half years, for the most part, that was like either self-funding or I did like an Indiegogo, you know, people donated about like an eight grand, helped me, you know, mm -hmm. and then my goddaughter's mom, she, she fronted me some money that I could buy a camera to go and shoot some stuff. So yeah, man, it was just a grind, bro. What at what point did the um did like the, the like NHL you know the Batman's the commission like when did all that kind of unfold and you getting in the mix uh, after and the, the two part uh, question yeah, yeah that yeah. and what happened when the NHL really had that like what was it with the coach remember the coach and that big remark and it it got real crazy like that was NHL really had to make a turn with all this I, uh, yeah is that uh, when you were touring at that time was it? um no that was because that was just a little while ago and they just they let it you know he left that was just a little while ago that's just like a they never uh, brought you in for anything like nah, they never like really, I mean to me I was like a cool time no I was I was I, this was way I, I was I've been in the mix with them mm -hmm. this was like this is just recent news but Getting involved, like the NHL didn't really get involved until the film was out. You know, like when I when I when I dropped it in two fifteen, in twenty fifteen, um, you know, Grant Fuhrer was there in Edmonton. He came and watched the film with the the audience there, and it won um, audience choice for best documentary film at the Edmonton Film Festival. And so with press and stuff like that, you know, in the hockey world, it was bubbling, and then. It got to Gary Bettman. He asked to watch it. Once he watched it, he, you know, he was just like, "Bombs, this is, you know, what I mean, let's 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 mess with the homie." Um, I'm sure he didn't say it like that, but he was just like, "Well, oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Side. That's what I'm saying. It's interesting because you see it all polished. You see it running, but I know it's this process, and it's interesting to know because some people's perception may be, reason I'm saying it like that is some people's perception may be like, "Oh, well, you know, it was easy for." for for Quams to do it, man. He went from the radio and then he got with the NHL and then he, they worked together and they put this film together no. and he went out. You know, I want people to hear like the whole, like, you know what I'm no. saying? The, the, the creative process, right? Yeah. To know just, that like you put in like, that legwork, you put yeah, in the legwork. Myself, work. Michael yeah. Douglas, who yes. done some videos for you. You know, we just, we had to just grind. It was just grind putting together.
But once it was done, I knew that I could take my knowledge of being in like in the in 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 the in the mix, like in the urban industry, radio, the hip hop scene. I just all I thought about was, okay, how how would I market? How would I promote a hip hop album? I looked at it like that. I'm like, I'm promoting a hip hop album. I got to do some street. I got to do some radio. I got to do some talk. I got to do whatever. You know what I mean? I, I just had that mindset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just it like that, and you know, I, I had the you know I was like with an album. Let me go tour the film. Mm-hmm. I go to different cities, show the film, have Q and A's after, and that kind of worked, man. And that just got that buzz going. And then because I had such a really good respectful relationship with the NHL, especially at that time, you know, I was almost like the de facto voice for discussing blacks in hockey. Now you got so many other people talking about it, but back then, and when I say back then, I'm not talking like 10, 15 years. I'm just talking about a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? But, like still, it, but so much has changed since that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, I want people like you can't, you can say it, but it's, it's cool. It's like you pioneered, I think through your work, your dedication, you pioneered something that's really awesome, man. Because it was like a catalyst for for change, there's a real catalyst for change. I can't put it another way. It's and it's gonna only and over time, it's really gonna really really see like ten years from now, we're gonna look back at it and be like, holy smokes, man! You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Over time, it's gonna be even mm-hmm. more important, and okay. more people want to see the value, the real value, right? Any no, questions to despair, man? You hockey dude, what's up, man? You got nothing to say? Hey, no questions about the I'm film? A, anything to spare? Tom got me, man. Tom, what's up? I'm just glad to see somebody actually doing something in the industry, especially like you never expected someone to like, turn around and go, okay, yo, a black man's doing a film about hockey. You, we didn't <laughs> even look at it that way. It was just like, yo, my dog's doing a film about hockey. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, right. it was just, just, uh, and to see where you came from, because I've seen what you've done in Calgary, I've been around stuff. I've heard you on the radio. You broke a lot of people in the game and made people noticed out there. So you already had a power within yourself. So I appreciate that. that off was just a respect because you showed a lot of us that there is other entrepreneurs. Like I looked up to you and acts in certain. Yeah, it's inspiring, man, oh, because we always take certain channels and avenues and it's like, Okay, you know what I mean? I could do that. Someone could do tennis now. But you didn't sell Someone out. could do, thing do food world. now. Someone could do something in sports now. We, we all start from this thing called, called hip-hop, but it gives us the tools to go anywhere, right? So, uh-huh. and like you, you said, do a part we, two now, especially yeah. with the league the way it is now. Yeah, that's, that's you know, that's the one thing I'm hoping to do is be able to do a part two down the road and just kind of, you know, take some of the kids that I had you when should do younger. a TV series. You should do the Uncle Snoop thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's like, we, I mean, I got, I got, I got a few things that we're trying to, trying to put together and stuff like that. But man, it's just you know, COVID just kind of really put a bite on things, you know. So mm-hmm. we're gonna see, man. Like all I know is right now, I'm in a good position where the the NHL, they're they're cool with me and cool with with my contributions to this, the evolution of this game. And, you know, I'm just trying to, to get in where I fit in and then, you know, we'll see what's what. Yep. Just cultivate the, the, the relationships. We know how to do it. And then, you know, when something makes sense, at least, you know, you can go and, and make that approach and they'll listen. And that's the hardest part. Just getting the, to get through that door and know that, Hey man, when I call, I got these people's attention and they're going to look over, you know what I mean? What it is I'm trying to put on the table. So, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? More props to you, bro. We all proud of that one, man. That was like, yeah. Dig it. Came with that one, man. So anything else you want to get into? What's going on, man? It's it's the final countdown, man. Um, oh, before we go too, what um well, your, your Tom, show, where can people Tom, find Tom, you? Where, Tom, where, where, Tom, Tom been Tom been itching this. Why are you blocking Tom, dog? You I, blocking don't know, Tom? Sitting, I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to know. I want to know what it was like to be able to sit with all of those legend hockey players and the new up and coming hockey players. Um, just looking at like Herb Carnegie, uh, sitting and yeah. talking with him almost brings a tear to your eye. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you find out that he passed away just after the filming yeah. of it. And 
it was it was just like a pleasure to watch you interview those yeah. guys. It was just awesome. But like, what was it like for you to be able to do that? You know, I, I think it was like, OK, so it was wicked. You know what I mean? But yeah, at the same time, I'm like, I was so not say stressed about making the film. I was just like, yo, I just got to make sure I keep my focus. I got to make sure I, I get what I need and, and, and the fun will come after. Sometimes it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you got to just, you, you got to just, mm -hmm. I'm saying being unprofessional, but you got to be like, yo, okay, it's Grand Fuhrer, just settle down, man. Just get the questions out, boom, get that done, make sure it's all good, and then the fun will come after, you know? And um, that was, that was like, you know, being around, Grant and Tony and her, all these guys was like, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, as a hockey fan, you're like, oh, this is, this is pretty dope. You know, um, <laughs> Neil Reed's house and like, you know, now for me now, it's just like, oh, okay, like, I, I, I do sit, sit, sit back and think about it. I'm like, yo, this has been a really dope ride. But, um, you know, at that, at the time of it, it was just like, you know, and, and like, and, and, and not even to sound, it's not even about cocky and stuff like that, but you know, being in radio, television, and interviewing for like the past 20 years, I've been in, across from people who I've always admired, you know what I mean? In music from Jay-Z down to Eminem, Beyonce. Like I've been- a, I've been tried a, everything, you know. You know. I, I've, I've interviewed <laughs> yeah. so many of those people. So I think I got to, I, I'm at a point where I can still admire them, but still be professional and, and then and then appreciate it after and just be like, uh, boom, that, that was another dope interview. That was another dope. Well, I think that's the key to getting a dope interview yeah. anyways, because the people get that energy from you. Yeah. That you're like one of them dudes, too, that's been around. Like, you know how to, like, just hang and, like, fall back <clears throat> and get it. And you respect, like, you know, the you understand their schedule, that, that the life is so scheduled. Like, most people don't understand that. So I think a lot of times people like artists and people on those kind of levels, they want to spend extra time. They'd love to, but they just, every, in 40 minutes, they got to yeah. do this. In 20 minutes, they got to do this. In 15 minutes, they got to eat this snack. Mm. And this, it's like they got this thing. So when you come <clears throat> like that, they yeah. I, I find they remember you for one. They always remember you because you're Hopefully. one of a thousand. And two, you get like the best interview or you get the best out of them. People come back like, wow, you got that out of them? You'll find, how'd you get that out of them? He's yeah. never like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, and I think I think that's especially with what we we're doing with the film. A lot of the stuff that we were talking about, they never really got to talk about, or they never got to talk about in the way that I was kind of kicking it to them. So, yeah, man, you know, I, I think um, it, it was a great it was a great avenue, great process, and it's allowed me to you know have some different avenues. Like for example, now if you want, you could check out um, our, our our podcast. It's called Soul on Ice, the podcast, and it has. Akil Thomas on there with me and Elijah Roberts for the most part. And, you know, if you're a hockey fan, we've had people from Gary Bettman to George LaRock to, you know, about to drop one with Luke Robitaille coming up and Keenan Thompson from SNL is going to come on there. We're going to talk some Mighty Ducks and, um, yeah, man. And, 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 yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and if anybody else wants to just check out what we're doing, and you know, so on ice, the, the movie, is our social media um, tags and uh, so on as the podcast. So yeah, we we, we in here, man. We trying. As you I, I got to hail up a kill, a, a kill, a kill Thomas. Uh, <laughs> his mom, I, I got this weird thing happened with his mom. His mom doesn't know me. His mom went to school with my brother, went to Northern. And believe it or not, I can't even go into the whole story, but she know what I'm talking. I got to tell her since she said the name. She called me like four years ago. And you know, somebody just wakes up and says they have this dream about you. She's like, I don't know you. I know you through music. I know your brother. But she's like, I had this crazy dream about you. And she told me, she said, you're going to be in this place doing certain things. And this is one of them. Oh, Isn't it right. crazy? This is like yeah. four years ago, man. Yeah. This is on some ground. Like, hey, I woke up in the morning, I had this day. She goes, I'm never wrong with my dreams. Yeah. And then when I saw her son do what she did for the juniors, it's crazy. Like, I'm not, we have this cool relationship, man. And yeah. it's funny you just brought the name. I had to throw that story in because she'd be like, Thrust, you right there, man. You didn't mention that. But yeah, big up to that, man. I'm so proud of her and, and her family and everything, man. It's great yeah. to see. You know what I'm saying? Well, Kwans, we love what you're doing, man. Thank um, you, brother. You're always welcome here. Uh, like I'm saying, man, 
anything you do, and man, we'll come back. We'll get at you again. Any new project, anything you want to do. Um, thanks for your time. I know it's very limited. Blessings to your family. You know what I'm saying? Right. To little man. It's little yeah, man, right? He's, he's, yeah, yeah. Little man is crying right now. You can. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he's bugging out. So I'm gonna go. No, I couldn't hear, but I had a vibe. See, the Scorpio vibe. <laughs> I just knew. See, <laughs> little man. It's a little man. It's little man time. I knew it, and I gotta go do my my my, my daughter. Tom got the family. The spirit got a show probably to do, and like he got so much show. So yeah, you know yeah, what it is. More, more the touch show. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, Director. Yeah, yeah. Austin, thanks so much for yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, this was the Northern Touch show. We are with Kwame Damon Mason. Uh, check him out on social media. Check out Soul on Ice, uh, the movie Soul on Ice, the podcast. Uh, you won't be disappointed with any of that. So yeah. check him out. And uh, thanks a lot for coming on. All right. Thanks, Bice. You guys keep it, keep it 100, right? All right. Respect. You my man. Dig. Good life. Dig.